So for number 13, um, we're trying to find the volume of the solid uh, between these two curves. So I've drawn the graph uh, 1 plus secant x, that is this equation here. And this is just a regular secant graph, but it's been shifted upwards 1. Um, and then the line y is equal to 3 over here. So um, there are actually there are infinite areas um, because the graph of, of 1 plus secant intersects, it repeats forever and ever, right? So it actually intersects um, the line y is equal to 3 a bunch of times. So in this problem, they don't specify it, but what they want you to do is just consider that, um, that interval between this, this area that I've shaded. Um, they don't want you to consider uh, the, the infinite intersections or else you'd have an infinite volume. Um, but this is poorly stated here in this problem. So we're taking this area here, um, and then we're revolving it around the line y is equal to 1. So let me draw that line. This is, this is y is equal to 1. So basically what is happening is um, we're going to have some disks here, and these disks are going to be revolved around here like so um yeah let me just draw that in okay yeah so these are the disks and then when we uh, when we sum up all these disks they're going to give us a volume so basically it's telling us to sum up all these disks from this point here where they intersect first to this other point um, so the first thing that we, we have to do is find the points of the intersection. So we're going to set these equation equal to each other to see where they touch. So we have 1 um, plus secant x is equal to 3. Therefore, um, secant x is equal to 2, which means, um, and since secant is 1 over cosine, right? So 1 over cosine x is equal to 2. 2, and therefore um, cosine of x is equal to 1 half. Now, um, cosine of x is equal to 1 half at two different points, right? Um, and when we're drawing our unit circle, it's positive 1 half up here and, and down here. Um, so it's equal to, this cosine is equal to 1 half when the angle is pi over 3. Um, so we have pi over 3 and negative pi over 3, or uh, which is exactly what is, what is happening here in this, in this drawing, right? We have one intersection in the positive side, and then it's symmetric to the other side, but negative. So uh, once we've found these points of intersection, now we have to talk about the actual disk, right? Um, so the, the disk... Is going to be is going to be made up of um, a actually maybe I can a one a one that's the big area minus a two right so a one is going to be the the outer radius uh, the area comprised by the outer radius and as we can see here. Um, the, the upper function, where it's going to be bigger, is actually the line at 3, right? Um, so that is where our biggest radius is going to be. Um, so for this one, it's going to be basically a1 is pi times r squared, right? And the radius is just 3, the distance from this function y is equal to 3, um, to the distance y is equal to 1. So 3 minus 1 squared that's a1 and now a2 a2 is going to be equal to pi um and the now this height of a2 it the height of the radius it's always changing because it's changing in accordance to the one plus secant x curve right um we can see that at some points like over here the radius is going to be smaller whereas over here it's going to be um bigger so it's it is a changing radius and that the distance is going to be basically um, 
the height of this function, right, minus 1. Because we're not looking at the height all the way from down here, right? That would be a bigger, bigger radius. We're looking at, um, let me undo, we're looking at the height from here all the way to here. So it's we're taking one unit away from it because we're revolving around the line y uh, is equal to 1. So we're going to do 1 plus secant x minus 1 squared. So we have an expression for a1 and a2, and now basically the ring is just a1 minus a2, right? Um, which is this this outer part here. So we have here that um, a1 minus a2 is equal to, uh, let's see, 3 minus 1 is 2, so we have pi times 2 squared minus and this is pi times 1 plus secant x minus 1, so it's just secant x squared, right? Minus um, pi times secant x squared. So uh, basically a1 minus a2 is equal to pi um, 4 minus secant x squared, secant squared of x. Okay, so now we're ready to set up our integral. Um, so our integral, and let me just create some space here for myself, our integral, and now instead of, because we found our bounds of computation, right, from minus pi over 3 to positive pi over 3, however, uh, there is symmetry here. Basically, I can either take the volume from negative pi over 3 to positive pi over 3, or I can take twice the volume of from 0 to pi over 3, right? Because there's symmetry. It's it's perfectly, uh, it's equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go twice the volume from 0 to pi over 3. Um, because that simplifies our calculations when we apply the lower boundary. So we're basically just summing up these areas from 0 to pi over 3 and then doubling it, right? So... Um, so over here, let me just move to the side, and that is 2 times um, pi, and that is 4 minus secant squared of x. And I'm just going to put the pi outside because it's a constant, um, dx. And this is equal to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 3, um, and that is 4 minus secant squared x dx, and now all we have to do is integrate it. So the integral of 4 is just 4x, so this is uh, it's equal to 2 pi times 4x minus the, um, the integral of secant squared. We have to think of the antiderivative. Um, the derivative of tangent is secant squared x, therefore the in integral of secant squared x is tangent. So minus tangent of x um, evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. So basically we just plug in these values. So we have 2 pi um, times 4 pi over 3 minus um, the tangent at pi over 3. Let's see, the tangent is sine over cosine, right? So that's square root of 3 over 2 um, divided by the cosine 1 half, right? So that's minus root 3, yeah. Um, and then minus the lower boundaries. But now the lower boundary is going to disappear. Uh, 4 times 0 is just 0, and 10, 0 is 0. So thankfully, this is a very simple calculation. Um, and when we clean this up a little bit, this is, let's see, um, oops, this is 8 pi cubed divided by 3 minus um, 2 pi root 3 cubic units. And basically that is our volume when we take the area between these two curves and we revolve it around the line y is equal to 1.